بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا حبيب الله صلى الله عليك يا من اختاره الله صلى الله عليك يا رحمة للعالمين ويا شفيع المذنبين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء يا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز فوزا عظيما لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين وألحقهم بدرك الجحيم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله في أواخر حياته أوصيكم بأهل بيتي خيرا صدق رسول الله For the safety of Imam Zaman and safety of the Mu'mineen ارفعوا أصواتكم بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد We have discussed in the previous nights about different occasions happened at the last days of the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam and how he wanted the people to go out of Medina and he ordered them to be with the army of Usama to go and fight with the Romans in an area around Sham or Jordan nowadays. And they refused, they were going, coming, going, coming, and refused to go. And then he asked for a pen and paper, or exactly say the piece of bone. He asked for it, and they refused to give it, to give him what he has asked for. And later on, you know, well, he got sick, and there were some views that he was given a medicine, Ledud, uh, which he rejected that, they said, well, because he had a pleurisy. Pleurisy is an inflammation of the pleura, which covers the lung, or maybe a type of pneumonia, an in, in infection of the lung, you know. So they said he is suffering of a pleurisy, and we have to give him medicine. But the Holy Prophet, when well, while he was uh, sleeping or semi-conscious, uh, they gave him by force some drops of medicine in his mouth, uh, when he was awake, he told them, why you have done that? They said, well, we thought you are sick. He said, well, don't you know that this is from Satan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uh, give power to Satan to overwhelm me. Well, in another sense, he wants to say that I do not have any disease. I do not have any sickness. And as we discussed yesterday, probably he was poisoned repeatedly and that is why ultimately the effect of poison was increasing. Because at one time he pointed out to Ethiopia, to Habasha. And he said, well, this has been brought from there, you know. It looks that in Ethiopia, I don't know, either medicines or poison were brought from there. There are different things, you know, mentioned in the history. We have discussed some part of this uh, yesterday. However, when the Holy Prophet got sick more and more, uh, let us say three days before uh, his uh, death, uh, it was Friday when he came to the mosque. Every time he used to, the, to come to the mosque because of his illness, he used to get support of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. And in one of the times, you know, the Holy Prophet came to the mosque uh, and he was supported by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and he told them, Ya ayyuha nas inni tarikum fikum al thaqalin Though this hadith of thaqalin was mentioned many times before, but the Holy Prophet is still insisting to remind the people about it, that they should catch both weighty or both great things, and they are the thaqalin. Then, 
he kept it quiet because he was tired and he was sitting and he wanted to continue. Somebody asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what are these two uh, weighty things? The Holy Prophet وسلم, was very much angry till his face become red from his uh, anger. Uh, and naturally, the one who denied that, it looks intentionally he will not he will want to deny because the Holy Prophet mentioned this thaqalain in Ghadir Khum and in many other occasions. So how he, as a Muslim companion, was with the Prophet, uh, if he's honest, not hypocrite, how he asked, what are these two weighty things? Well, many times before he has heard that from the Holy Prophet. So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I did not mention them except that I want to tell you about them, who they are. And, uh, but I got tired and I could not continue my speech. Uh, these two, one of them is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It's like a rope with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the other side is in your hand. And uh, that is you know about him. And that is the Quran. So one, the Holy Quran is one bar descended from Almighty Allah. So one side of it is in heaven and another side with you that you have to read and follow the Holy Quran. وَالثَّقْلُ الْأَزْغَرْ أَهْلُ بَيْتِي And the smaller uh, weighty or less weighty thing is the my progeny, أَهْلُ bayt. Then he said here is very uh, important this saying, uh, وَأَيْمَ الله إِنِّي أَقُولُ لَكُمْ هَذَا وَرِجَالٌ فِي أَصْلَابِ أَهْلِ الشِّرْكِ أَرْجَى عِنْدِي مِنْ كَثِيرٍ مِنْكُمْ uh, Well, uh, the Holy Prophet said that uh, by Allah I am telling you this about the two weighty things and I know that there are certain uh, people who are still in the back of their fathers and I hope that they will uh, follow and uh, catch these two things more than big number of you, you know. So though their parents nowadays are mushrik, are uh, polytheists, but still among their offsprings, there will be a believers. So the Holy Prophet was looking to those believers who are coming from the, as a descendants of the non-believers. And he said, I hope for them to be a believer and to catch uh, these two weighty things more than great number, kathiram minkum, a bigger number of you. And again, while he insisted here, he said, Wallah la yuhibbuhum abdun illa atahu allahu nooran yawm al-qiyama hatta yarida alayya al -hawd. By Allah, no one loves him uh, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a light in the day of judgment till he come to the fountain of Kawthar, or to the Hawd. And no one hate them, وَلَا يَبْغُضْهُمْ عَبْدٍ إِلَّا احْتَجَبَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And no one hate them, hate the Ahlul Bayt and the Quran, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, have a barrier between him, I mean the mercy of Allah will not reach him in the day of judgment. There is a barrier between uh, mercy of Allah and the one who hate Ahlul Bayt. So this is what uh, has been mentioned as stressing on Ahlul Bayt. Probably it is a reaction because they prevented him from uh, writing what he wanted to write and they create confusion. So he came and talked to the general people rather than to talk at home. Of course, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani mentioned this uh, also and he added to it ثم أخذ بيد علي أن هي كات هاند أوف إمام علي عليه السلام أن يسيد هذا علي مع القرآن والقرآن مع علي This علي is with Quran and Quran is with علي خليفتان نصيران Both of them are caliphs and they are supporting each other لا يفترقان حتى يرد علي الحوض Will never separate from each other till the time they reach me at the fountain of Hawd. فَأَسْأَلُهُمَا مَاذَا خَلَّفْتُ فِيهِمَا I will ask them what I have left among them. So if Ahlul Bayt are with the Quran always, so those naturally who did not follow Ahlul Bayt, did not follow the Quran, 
because Quran is always with Ahlul Bayt as Ahlul Bayt are with the Quran. So if you are away of Ahlul Bayt, you are away of Quran. They are at one place, they are together. Well, beside it shows that Ahlul Bayt are infallible because the Holy Quran is infallible. If Ahlul Bayt do any sin, uh, God forbid, if that is possible for them, naturally they would be part from the Quran. And uh, because the Quran uh, is uh, infallible and there is no falsehood in it, so naturally Ahlul, Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhim, whatever they say and wherever they stand and whatever they order is according to the Holy Quran. Those who did not follow Ahlul Bayt naturally are away of that. Then it is mentioned there uh, that the Holy Prophet remembered he had a few dinars because he used to distribute money among the poor people and needy people. And in the last days, he remembered that he has a few dinars. When he remembered them, then he was uh, annoyed that why it was forgotten. And he said, what Muhammad is uh, thinking that if he meet Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this money, which is right of the people, is still not distributed. Then he asked them to bring the money and ordered Imam Ali السلام, to pay them as sadaqa to the needy people. Then, well, he left to the to his home, his home, as we said before, it was attached to the masjid. Uh, it was actually uh, to the Qibla side of the masjid. The house of Imam Ali السلام, Fatima al Zahra is on the left side of the masjid. Uh, left side, I mean, if you are facing Qibla, it is on the left side. Uh, however, the, he came to the mosque again and again, uh, but uh, uh, he is asking the people or um, advising the people. But one point here is very important that uh, he has them that all the people, it is my time to, uh, to die. And anybody who has any promise, I promise him to fulfill anything. So let him come and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you promised me this and that, and you did not give it to me. And whoever has something that uh, uh, I owe him some money, and let him come and ask for whatever uh, right he has upon me. So somebody uh, stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I got married and you promised me to give me um, three uqiyya, about three pounds. Uh, so he asked the Fadl uh, to give him, and he said, give him what has been promised. And then it is said also it was on the Friday, uh, three days before his death, because as we said, his death is on the Monday, on the day of Monday. He said, again, that any person, uh, I owe him something, any right or any qisas, anything wrong I did in my life. So let him come and ask me because I want to give rights of the people who, as long as I am alive. I don't want to delay it in the day of judgment and in the day of judgment, I will be exposed uh, in the view of the uh, all mankind there. So I don't want to fulfill all the rights upon me uh, in this world. And it is mentioned that one man called Sawad ibn Qais, he stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, uh, you owe me something. Uh, he said, what? He said, on the day of Ta'if, after the Battle of Hunain, you were coming and you had your uh, scribe to scribe your camel, but you hit my stomach, my belly. And uh, naturally, uh, that was a mistake, but I have a right, I need to take my right from you. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say anything. Well, he asked Bilal to go and bring uh, that uh, uh, scribe to uh, the same which is used. Well, the people were crying. The Holy Prophet is sick, the mosque is full. And many asked him, oh, Sawada, what are you doing? This is the Holy Prophet. Well, Sawada, anyhow, he has some uh, thing in his mind, you know, he was thinking when it was um, brought, then he said, well, open your uh, abdomen because I was without a dress when you hit me. So the Holy Prophet, uh, of course, here 
the Holy Prophet could say that Qisas is not here because that was by mistake done. And if it is mistake, there is no Qisas, there is Diyya. Qisas when it is intentionally done. But here is Diyya. But still the Holy Prophet wanted to give an example to people that they have to fulfill rights of others as much as possible so that their rights are given in this world rather than it is delayed in the hereafter. So he opened his body and he said, okay, uh, uh, come and take a sauce and you get the stripe in your hand. He came and he said, well, do you allow me to kiss your belly? The Holy Prophet said, yes. So he kissed the Holy Prophet and he said, oh Allah, I take refuge with you by the place which of Qisas from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Holy Prophet insisted that, O oh, Sawada, will you take Qisas or you forgive? He said, no, I will forgive Ya Rasulullah. Then Allah, the Holy Prophet prayed for him that said, O oh, Allah, forgive uh, Sawada for uh, his forgiving the Prophet. Uh, so was giving that example to the people that even if he is a prophet, at whatever condition is he, but still uh, he has to give rights of the people, whatever has happened. Well, after that, he was sick at home and he was in house of Fatima al-Zahra, salamullahi alayha. Uh, well, uh, the last moments of the Holy Prophet, maybe the last day or so, he shifted from a uh, house of his wife's to house of his daughter, Fatima al-Zahra. And he was in house of Imam Ali, alayhi salam. And he was uh, staying with them, naturally uh, talking to them, uh, sometimes of the events happening and the problems, the tragedies are going to happen upon them. And ask them to be patient. This is the will of Allah. Uh, and then at times was sleeping and sweating Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliyah saw his sweat is like a peril coming. She recited the poetry of Abu Talib, Wa Abi Yada Yustasqa Al Ghamam. The Wajihi is a white man in which, if we ask Allah to bring rain by his face, then uh, rain will come. Thamalul Yatama Asmatun Lil Aramili. He is a supporter for those, for the widows and for the orphans. You know. So the Holy Prophet opened his eye and he said, oh, my daughter, this is said by my uncle or your uncle Abu Talib. But now you see what the Holy Quran has said. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad is a messenger, like there were many messengers before him. If he dies or killed, then you will turn back on your heels. He wanted to tell her that it is now the time of death, not the time of life, you know, to remind her for that. Well, Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, naturally was crying. And then he asked her to come to him to talk to her uh, privately. She came and he talked to her privately. Then she started weeping severely. Then he called her again. He talked to her. And then she started laughing and smiling and was happy about what he says. Aisha asked the Fatima al Zahra what he told you. She said, well, I cannot leak a secret of the Prophet. But later on, after death of the Prophet, she was asked again. She said, well, he told me that I am going to die very soon. This is my time of death, you know. So I start crying uh, for that tragedy. Then he said, but the second time he told me, but you are the first one among my Ahlul Bayt to follow me. So I was happy. Now you see Fatima al Zahra is happy to die very soon to meet her father because she knew what problems, what tragedies are um, going to happen. Then uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to advise the Muslims in one of his advices he said as salah as salah wa ma malakat aymanukum so take care of the prayer take care of the prayer because the prayer as we know is very important as salatu amud din it is the pillar of religion in qubilat qubila ma suwaha if it is accepted rest deeds of the believers are accepted wa in ruddat if it is rejected then other deeds will be 
rejected. Many people take the prayer easy without its conditions properly or without praying on time, without taking care to, uh, for the prayer. So that is naturally is not a good sign. Unfortunately, some of them may be missing the prayer, which is haram to miss the prayer. So always the advice was about the prayer. And here the Holy Prophet in his last moments also was stressing about the prayer. Actually, Ka'b al-A'bar, uh, who was uh, a Jew and uh, become a Muslim, he asked Umar what was the last will of the Prophet, advice, what he said. Umar said, I don't know, ask Ali. And he asked Imam Ali, Imam Ali told him it was about the prayer. He said, well, as such are the prophets, because they, all the prophets, before they die, they stress to the people about the prayer, because in a prayer, it is the situation of humiliation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is one of the best ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is um, about when, what he said, and then uh, in the last, uh, moments also, maybe the last hours, uh, it looks Imam Ali was not there. Uh, naturally, Imam Ali had many responsibilities to leave. The Holy Prophet told them, Ad'uli Aliyan. Uh, and in some books of history, he said, call my brother. So Aisha said, well, call Abu Bakr. When Abu Bakr came, the Holy Prophet turned and he said again, call my brother. Then Hafsa said, call Omar. And when Omar came, the Prophet turned his face and he said, call my brother. Then uh, other wives of the Prophet said, well, he means Ali. Why do you delay? Call Ali. Then Imam Ali السلام, came uh, near the Prophet. Well, Imam Ali السلام, said in those moments, you know, the Holy Prophet talked to him for a, a while, maybe a few minutes. And then Imam Ali said, "Allamani Rasulullah alf bab min al-ilm yuftah li min kull bab alf bab." The Prophet told me a thousand door of knowledge, and from each door, a thousand door is opened. You know, so it is a million door of knowledge was given. Of course, that uh, way of uh, transferring knowledge from the Prophet to Imam Ali is not ordinary way of the people when they read. Uh, books and go step by step, you know, while well, it is a type of uh, um, prophets when uh, they give the will and Ruh uh, al-Qudus is transferred from the prophet when he dies to the imam after the prophet. And naturally with Ruh al-Qudus, Ruh al-Qudus is a light from earth to heaven and the imam will see by Ruh al-Qudus things, you know. So probably here, the Holy Prophet gave him the secrets of leadership of Imamate, and uh, that is why he said in that moment, a million door of knowledge was given to me. And also, after that, it is mentioned that uh, the Holy Prophet was very ill uh, at the door, uh, uh, at the room, and the door was knocked. Uh, Fatima Zahra went to, open, to ask, who is there? He said, well, I am someone I want to see the Prophet. She said, well, the Prophet is in a very terrible condition. You go. And well, when she came back again, that uh, person came and knocked the door. Then again, Fatima Zahra asked about him. And he said, well, I want to meet the Prophet. She said, well, the Prophet is busy, is very ill, is sick. He cannot. Uh, meet anyone at this moment, you know. Then when third time the door was knocked, the Holy Prophet told Fatima to Zahra, open the door. He is Israel. He is the angel Israel. He cannot enter this house unless he gets permission. And he is getting permission to enter the house. When Israel came and he asked him that, are you Zahir or Qabir? Are you visiting or you are coming to take my soul? He said, no, well, I'm getting, uh, coming to take your soul, if you agree with that. And then he was given a choice, you know, that Allah, uh, the Holy Prophet said, okay, let uh, my dear uh, Jibrail comes. Then Jibrail came, and he was beside the bed of the Prophet. Then Jibrail told him that uh, you have a choice. 
either you will live eternally in this world uh, or you want to meet Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will die. So the Holy Prophet said, no, that to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better for me to live eternally here. And it is mentioned that, uh, well, the moment of taking the soul was very difficult for the Prophet, very severe. Naturally, for anyone take, coming out of the soul, whatever is being light and easy for a mu'min, but still it is difficult. So the Holy Prophet uh, asked Azrael that, is it difficult for everybody? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, and more difficult for you is naturally the easiest way. He said, well, reduce the suffering of the believers and mu'mineen after me and take their soul in very light and gentle way. Then he was in the, on the, his head was on the chest of Imam Ali alayhi salam when he uh, passed his last moments. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, well, I saw the nafs, the soul of the Prophet. Now some said it was the blood comes out. Some said, well, it is the soul itself, you know, uh, because the word in hadith is the soul of the Prophet, not blood from the Prophet. The soul, he said, I uh, wiped my face uh, with it, you know, and well, his soul uh, raised to heaven. Imam Ali alayhi salam was uh, uh, at that uh, uh, room with the Holy Prophet, with Fatima Zahra, Hassan, and Hussein. And then he was responsible to uh, do ghusl and kafan and bury the Holy Prophet. No one else participated in that because for the hujjatullah, then another hujja should uh, do that. So Imam Ali is the Imam after the Prophet. That is why he uh, took care of the body of the Prophet. Well, no one of the Sahabas participated in that uh, uh, bath ceremony for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa And then he was uh, he dig the uh, grave for him, and then uh, brought the body of the Prophet uh, first. Well, they kept the body for the prayer. And the first one who prayed uh, upon the Prophet was Imam Ali alayhi salam. Then he asked the Mu'mins, the believers, to come and pray because the room was small. So he used to ask people 10 by 10 to come pray, pray the special prayer for Janazah, and they go. And that took about three days, you know, continuously. Well, thousands of Muslims, all of them are interested to get thawab of prayer upon the Prophet, so they used to come. And there was no Imam for them because they said uh, the Holy Prophet is Imam for the believers, whether he's alive or dead. So there was no Imam Jama'at for the uh, Salatul Mayyid. However, uh, those who were supposed to be in the army of Usama outside Medina, it is mentioned that uh, well, they got together in Saqifat Bani Sa'ada in a um, special uh, place called Saqifat Bani Sa'ada uh, and they argued about who is the Caliph. Now the Holy Prophet told them many times and repeatedly is that the Caliph, the Imam, uh, is Imam Ali alayhi salam. However, they were there and then uh, uh, it is said that Omar and Abu Bakr and uh, others have gone there. So they asked the Ansar, the supporters of the Prophet who are from Medina, that uh, what, uh, who do you think is the, you know, they said, well, naturally Imam Ali. First, you know, Ansar said, naturally Imam Ali is the Imam, uh, because we hear the Holy Prophet say that. Then Omar told them that, no, later on the Holy Prophet said, no, it is up to you, the Muslims. You did not hear what the Holy Prophet said later on. Uh, well, uh, then they said, uh, okay, if it is in that case, then we will get Sa'ad ibn Abada, who was the respected man, elder man from Khazraj. And then the argument started there, you know, a lot of details in Saqifa. Ultimately, they brought Abu Bakr to the mosque and they declared him as a caliph. 
while still the body of the Prophet was not buried, you know, still the Ahl al-Bayt, Imam Ali, Bani Hashim, Al-Abbas, Qutham, Al-Fadl, all, Bani Hashim, Aqil, etc., uh, all were with the uh, body of the Prophet, waiting to bury the Prophet, and before that, they decided what they have to decide. And then, what well, the Prophet told them, that the tragedies will come. Actually, the Holy Prophet said that, and, and um, he forecasted what is going to happen, and it is mentioned when he uh, came to uh, Baqi'ah. Uh, before uh, his death, he came to the Baqi'ah and uh, he said, Assalamu alaikum ya ahl al-qubur. He paid salam to the people in the grave and he said, Liyuhnikum ma asbahtum bi. What a good the situation that you are there comparing with what the situation of the people are at the moment. لِيُهْنِكُمْ لِيُهْنِئَكُمْ مَا أَصْبَحْتُمْ فِيهِ مِمَّا أَصْبَحَ النَّاسُ فِيهِ أَقْبَلَتِ الْفِتَنْ كَقِطَعَ اللَّيْلِ الْمُظْلِمْ يَتْبَعُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا يَتْبَعُ آخِرُهَا أَوَّلَهَا The turmoil is coming like the um, darkness of the nights and they are following each other. Uh, the last one is following the first one so there is continuation of turmoil, problems, hazards, tragedies coming. You know. And when well, he did istighfar for uh, the people of Baqi' and looked to Imam Ali السلام, and told him that, Ya Ali, I was given uh, a choice between uh, all the treasures of this world and to be eternally, to be eternal with getting all the treasures of the world or between meeting my Lord and the paradise but I have and the angel Jibreel used to come every year and recite the Holy Quran uh, um, continuously but this year he came twice not one time so I think it is my last year to be uh, alive uh, and then he came to the masjid and he told them that oh people the hellfire is burning and the Turmoil, waqbalat al-fitan, kaqata'a al-layl al-muzlim. Turmoils are coming upon you like the um, pieces of darkness of the night. And by Allah, you have no complaint from me. Wa inni wallah ma tumassikuna alay bishay. You have no excuse that I did something from myself. Inni lam uhil illa ma ahal Allah. I did not do anything halal except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made lawful. And I did not do anything unlawful except what Allah made it lawful. And we see you now from usurping the uh, Khilafah till uh, forcing Imam Ali for bay'ah, till attacking the house. And then the tragedies which happened for the house of Fatima to Zahra. Salamullahi alayhim. Inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'oon. Wa siya'lamu alladheena zalamu ayya man qalabi yanqalibun. Wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. اللهم انا نسالك وندعوك بجلال وجهك الكريم وقرانك العظيم وبمحمد واهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ان تعجل فرج وليك صاحب العصر والزمان وان تجعلنا من انصاره واعوانه ومن المجاهدين بين يديه اللهم اكشف به هذه الغمه عن هذه الامه اللهم انصر به الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم املا به الارض قسطا وعدلا بعدما ملئت ظلما وجورا اللهم اقض به حوائجنا واشف به مرضانا وارحم به موتانا واغفر به ذنوبنا واسع به أرزاقنا وبارك به لنا في ديننا ودنيانا وآخرتنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم لك الحمد أن وفقتنا للحضور في مجالس أهل البيت سلام الله عليهم فارزقنا يوم القيامة شفاعتهم ومن الحوض شرابهم وعلى الجنة وعلى الصراط مرافقتهم وفي الجنة معهم في على عليين مع الشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا وإلى روح موت الحاضرين وشيعة أمير المؤمنين ومن مات على الإيمان خصوصا من العلماء والشهداء وذوي الحقوق رحم الله من يهدي ثواب الفاتحة قبلها صلوات